Thanks for joining us here on Breakfast this morning. Nearly 20 past seven. It's a big day for transport uh, because the company responsible for building the HS2 high speed rail line linking London and Birmingham. We've talked about it for years already, haven't we? And there's years to come. But that company is starting the construction phase, the actual building stage of the project today. Now, the government says the project is going to boost economic growth and provide opportunities across the country. There are critics of the scheme who fear a negative impact on the environment and believe the money would be better spent on improving the transport links which exist already. Let's speak to one of those critics, shall we? One of those campaigners, Joe Rukin from uh, Stop HS2, joins us now uh, mm -hmm. from central London. Uh, morning to you, Joe. I mean, there will be people this morning who are looking at a long commute, either in their cars or on slower trains, who are thinking, bring it on, let's get this route ready. I want to speed up that journey in and out of London across the country. Uh, you're not celebrating today, though. Just explain why well, not. Uh, well. Yeah, the, the case for HS2 was dodgy at best in the past. COVID-19 has made it absolutely non-existent because the entire rationale for HS2 is that thousands and thousands of people every day are clamouring to commute. You know, the, the business case for HS2 relies on the idea that there will be 100,000 more passengers per day wanting to come into London and, uh, and use this line. And... We, it, it's simply not the case. You know, we've been saying for 10 years that it will become the business imperative, that the home working will become more and more common, that people will want to work from home. And we said, all right, it'll, it'll be gradual. Well, uh, thanks to coronavirus, it's happened overnight. People realise that it's doable. Businesses want to do it. People want to do it. The government are trying to get people to come back into the office and they're not doing it because they don't want to because they realise that they do not have to suffer the arduous torture of commuting into our cities. HS2 has never been a, a good idea and the case for it now is absolutely dead in the water. And it isn't terrible, terribly devastating environmental project. There's almost 700 wildlife sites threatened by HS2. There's over 100 ancient woodlands going to be impacted. HS2 Limited's own figures, their own figures project that after 120 years of operation, and we're a long way from operation yet, after 120 years it still won't be carbon neutral, which is basically saying when every single one of the 7 billion people alive on planet Earth today, when everyone alive today is dead, then it still won't be carbon neutral. It would still have been better to have done nothing. Okay. And of course, those I, carbon I hate, figures are you. worse than we thought because I, they're based on these passenger numbers which aren't going to turn up. Let's talk about those passenger numbers because I can see how you would you think that when you look at empty stations and platforms at the moment. But I suppose uh, the government, the company, many commuters will say, look, this is only temporary. We're going no, through a pandemic no, at the moment, but in time, over the next few months, maybe it'll take a couple of years, but we will get back to normal. People will no. go back to the office. Our city centres will be busy and we're going to need to get around. No, it's simply not the case. The world How do you know? has changed. How do you know it's not the case? Because it's, it's been happening for years. It's slow, it's been slow and it's gradual. And, and COVID-19 has proven to people that this is doable. Only, you know, there's been surveys, only 6% of people want to return to the old way of doing things. Why on earth do people want to commute? Nobody wants to commute. All right. People will still need to go into the office, but not five days a week. The demand for travel will exponentially drop off a cliff. And building HS2 is ridiculous at this point in time. It just shows how absolutely out of touch our government are. You say and this, this idea trend has that it's going to be good for jobs, yeah, my but, word. But you say it, that this trend against commuting has been slow and gradual over time. But we've all seen over the last few years trains on many routes being packed, getting getting yeah. busier, yeah, especially sure, look at those pictures in the past and you've said there is a demand for this. No, th this is the thing. And the you look at, say, the Public Accounts Committee uh, report onto HS1. What is common with high-speed rail projects across the world is that they always fail to attract the grossly inflated passenger forecasts that were used to justify their construction. And with HS2, it's going to be worse because the move to home working is underway. And just what Boris Johnson has said about the jobs, the jobs figure, trying to push HS2 as this idea that, oh, we're going to create all these 
these jobs and it's going to help us recover. 22,000 jobs is saying it, that construction will create. Less keen to mention the almost 20,000 jobs that HS2 permanent displaces. But if we look at 22,000 construction jobs and take the low estimate, if we believe the low estimate of costs for phase one of 40.5 billion, so, then that works out at almost two million pounds to create one single job and there's at a time when there are businesses going under every day for the want of less than it will cost to create one job on HS2. But on that question of jobs in the economy the government would say that if you build a, a rail line like this you will level up the country, no, you will you create won't. investment and boost business in parts of the country like the Midlands, the North and, and uh, the North East, which, which is currently uh, not being served enough. And that's, that's, that's a brilliant argument from, from government in the way that you know, they'll, take a, they'll take this statement and it sounds like it should be true. But then you look at every single piece of international evidence and the evidence of our own hub and spoke transport system in this country. And you realise that actually what HS2 will do is drag more and more economic activity to London. There will be some uplift around the station sites and obviously, you know, that's why it's been lobbied from the people who want to make money out of building and it, building it and the money out of uh, the associated land grab around the station yeah, site. Okay. There will be some uplift around there, but it will be at the expense of the wider region. Joe, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm the afraid. Big places. We're going to have to leave it there, Joe. I'm sorry, we've run out of time.